All right, so today we're exploring an ancient volcano and a wind farm project that was abandoned in 1925. On the far side, uh, towards the back half of the video, we'll also be looking at some of the evidence of volcanic activity there at a beautiful spot called the Lace Curtain. So really excited for this trip and uh, hope you all learned something from it. Awesome. Alrighty, so uh, we got a pretty beautiful view over there. Just left Snowland, and you can see, well, wow, that was a really good name, Dave, Snowland. Hey, Aldo, Austin, come here, boys. Austin, come on, that's a dead animal. Why, oh, you're peeing on a dead animal up. carcass. What is wrong with you? Not classy, bro. Not classic. Anyway, um, so structure way out there. We're gonna follow these power lines all the way down. See a little bit of a dirt road here. And then about 12 miles down this road, we'll uh, uh, kick out um, to the south and, uh, and come up on that, what you can call is a, a butte. And somewhere in that area on Google Earth was um, the Stonehenge, spirally looking structures so anyway um we're gonna see how that goes and i did bring a drone because i'm a little worried that some of this road isn't accurate so if we have to we'll pop out the drone do a little bit of a drone recon so we're leaving you <laughs> either way so um this structure uh, we were able to find one book that kind of mentions it and it's uh, I think it's called like Living in the Black Rock Desert and uh, even the book looks creepy and some of the pictures in it look creepy so uh, I am interested to see what we find when we get up there Let's see, the drone is like 400 feet out. So once that returns, we'll get moving again in the truck. But uh, uh, I think we can probably go a little further south and then we'll cut in um, and start heading up that mountain here in a little bit. So it should be fun. As we head up the hill here, I did want to take a second to explain that uh, I did film uh, the videos at the top prior to doing a little bit more in-depth research. So, um, what you will see is uh, that right now we are climbing an ancient volcanic eruption from about 15,500 years ago, hence the name Black Rock Desert. And the structure at the top is uh, the work of a man by the name of A.H. Hood, who, um, you know, for two years paid individuals to sit atop uh, this structure and conduct wind observations. So I'll give you some more details on that after these two walkthrough videos. And we'll do uh, an overhead view of the area and I can explain um, how he planned to build a wind farm up here. Pretty cool. Um, obviously that was quite a climb. Last time we spoke to y'all, we were way down there. so. Um, pretty awesome spot. We'll go up there in a minute. Um, you know, it, they call it like Utah Stonehenge, right? And you'll see a lot of um, what you would think would be monolithic type structures. You get up there, there's kind of a bunker and all that. So let's, uh, let's go check this thing out. It was like, what? Came up here, I wasn't expecting the bunker. 
Austin wasn't either. He's inside there right now exploring, so we'll go explore with him. But anyway, so maybe we gotta look up in that book more. There's a series of these all the way around. Okay, what's up Austin? And I'm not sure if that was meant to be a supporting, supporting beams for a larger structure. They're all bolted up top, right? So anyway, let's give you a full picture. Interesting. Okay. You know, some nice skylights, not a bad little spot, you know? Where you at? What's up? Can you walk away from the edge? Good boy. Anyway, so some wood and beer, plenty of people in here all the time. But uh, anyway, I don't blame them because check out this view you're gonna get from the top at sunset. So, so we're gonna go up top here real quick. Um, just so you all get an idea of um, what this structure looks like. So, you know, I'm right here at the front now, okay? And uh, you can see the spirals all the way around, right? Leading to these support beams. So, I mean, the structure is obviously a spiral. Almost reminds me of spir Spiral Jetty a little bit, which is a, uh, man-made sculpture using rocks um, over by the Great Salt Lake. So if you haven't checked out Spiral Jetty in Utah yet, you should definitely do that. Either way, so I did read up in the book a little bit and uh, what this place actually was in 1923, um, they were trying to bring power to local small you know villages around here right like we just went through holden holden doesn't have a gas station nothing like that right very small town and can you imagine in 1923 uh in very remote areas like this they were trying to find unique ways to bring power that uh were probably pretty cost effective so a group of people actually uh lived up here for two years doing wind assessments to determine if this was a viable solution and after that two years, the project was abandoned. So, um, I don't know. Part of me thinks it's super cool that in 1923, and maybe they didn't see it as a uh, green solution, right? But they were um, finding unique ways to pursue uh, sustainable energy, even if maybe they didn't view it there. It was probably a much more practical standpoint back then of, hey, look, we've got no other way to get power out here. So, um, anyway, cool spot. And I uh, hope y'all enjoyed this little overview of an attempted windmill farm back in 1923. Pretty cool. So I did want to explain a few things here before we headed to the bottom of the butte to check out some of the evidence of volcanic activity. And as you can see from this overhead shot, it, it wasn't actually a set of spirals, right? Uh, the pillars were actually in two circles, so an inner and an outer circle. The intent that A.H. Hood had here with his project was to build a rail system. Uh, so picture these two circles as rails on top of the pillars. And then uh, he would attach sails to cart-like structures for rail carts. And it would act more like a sailboat. So don't think when we say wind farm, a traditional windmill uh, that we see today, where wind is blowing into it and it's more like a fan, Think of a sailboat, so there'd be a series of sails on the outer and inner circle that would uh, blow around all day, right? And uh, then charge a generator that was meant to be in the bunker. So the bunker was meant to uh, protect the equipment for the generator and all that good stuff, and therefore provide electricity. Somewhere along the line, in 1925, it appears that maybe A.H. Hood was arrested for mail fraud um, potentially like a Ponzi scheme or maybe for this investment here. Uh, I'm not really sure. Maybe he got quite a bit of money from some people for this investment and wasn't delivering quick enough. Uh, I wish I could do his name more justice and get some more evidence for that. Maybe not Stonehenge, <laughs> but uh, either way, pretty cool structure out here in the, in the middle of the desert. So...
All right, y'all. So we just got to uh, uh, Lace Curtain, and um, basically uh, out here at Pavan Butte, they call it Black Rock Desert because there was a volcanic eruption here uh, around what used to be Lake Bonneville, ancient lake. Anyway, so uh, 15,500 years ago, volcanic rock erupted. And on the other side, you'll see like steep cliffs, all that sort of thing. Uh, however, on this side of the cliff, you'll see a, almost a lace curtain effect. You can kind of see it going up there. We'll get closer and where you can see the drips, but I did want to just show on this rock right here where it's pretty evident. You have the pockets all on the side. Um, so definitely a, a pretty interesting area. So let me get up here with the doggies. I guess I was going to show you, but Aldo's going to lead the way. Where are we going, Aldo? With his ball. <sighs> I wish I had four paws. This would be way more efficient. Okay. So, if you're a rock climber, I don't know how stable any of this is, but pretty unique. Austin, what are you doing? Come on. Come on, boy, you got it. So, either way, another cool thing out here in Utah, not very well known, not a lot of people come out here who aren't already off-roading, actually, I guess is a better way to put that. But let's see if we can fit in here. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so right now we're in a little old lava tunnel. <laughs> okay, how ridiculous do I look right now? I'm a grown man curling through little baby tunnels like a child. And I'm not gonna lie, <laughs> I thought that'd be fun, but oh, it was fun. With the rocks so sharp. What's up, Aldo? <laughs> all right, I hope I made that look totally smooth and not painful at all. I'm sure I did. What you doing, Aldo? Going through tunnels? Cool. All right, last view. Lace curtain. Okay. So for the remainder of this video is uh, literally just the Jeep driving through some of the trails around the Butte and uh, heading through some water, which was, I'm not gonna lie, kind of fun. But what I would say is, you know, the earth has a lot to offer. And sometimes the history of a 15,500 year old volcanic eruption that really appears to be the only elevation change or hill in the immediate area can have a lot more history to it um, once humans get involved right and i really don't know the full history of agehood i would love to have more time to be more investigative i think in these journeys and maybe i'll try to do that more in the future as i get better at exploring some of these surrounding areas and, and old ruins. But uh, what I can say is regardless of whether or not he may have ran into some legal troubles, um, which I've seen in two different books and references, one being a geographical reference um, actually written by the government, but I haven't seen any official records of that. Either way, what I will say is, you know, he was a bit ahead of his time and uh, I think had a pretty amazing idea um, 
to try to do something different and, and think different and challenge the status quo. And uh, so many times in life we can fall into our rhythm and forget how powerful our actions can be to try to change the world. So I appreciate at least that a little bit of his idea was left behind for us to see almost 100 years later. Either way, thanks for watching, y'all. I'll try to get better at this whole editing deal and look forward to exploring more lost spaces with y'all.